Here we go. It's no jumper. And I am here seated with the motherfucking goth money trillionaires. Almost can't believe it. What's going on, boys? What do you do, man? Sitting right across from me, the one and only Marcy Main, aka MFK. And uh, to my left, King Groceries, the the young the young, young heartthrob of the of the squad, I guess. How's it going, boys? What do you do, man? Um, so what's going on? And and can you introduce me to your friend here for anybody who don't know? Uh, it's my nigga Ruminelli, set a game pay, you know, golf money pay, all that. Claims he's not going to talk on camera, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Shit. All right. I was going to point these at you. Um, and we got Kane over here rolling up uh, some weed that I handed to him, and he told me immediately that it smelled like Gorilla Glue, mm-hmm. which That's I don't that know. Gas. That's that stuff that, that you guys are smoking, mm-hmm. Gorilla Glue. You're adding all kinds of chemicals and preservatives to your weed. Good yeah. hybrids, man. No? Nah? Yeah. We ain't doing that. We just smoking good, good gas. Shit. I don't even smoke dabs. You don't smoke dabs? Nah, man. That's interesting. That's a, that's a very anti-California perspective. Yeah. I'm from the East Coast. I got to smoke sticks, right. seeds, and weed. So you need some sticks and seeds in there for you to feel all right? Feel nah, comfortable? Nah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it has to grow from sticks and seeds. Right. I don't want that. Uh, that that dab shit is like damn near crap. It's too chemically processed. Yeah. I took a dab one time, and I damn near felt like I was on crack. I took a dab on Los Angeles in second. At my homie Sam's house, and I was outside tweaking, thinking people was chasing me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody remembers their first dab, even if they're like a lifetime weed smoker. It just will fuck your ass up real good. I used to take dabs and go to school like for like two years straight, and just like skip school and take dabs. High school? High school. Yeah. See, that's guaranteed. Mad white people, like (laughs) like, you know, like it was just crazy. All right, but so you're from the East Coast. Where at? I'm from DC. uh, Oh, okay. Maryland area, (laughs) PG County. And Kane, are you you're the only one who's not from DC? Nope. I'm from originally from Chicago, but I pretty much went to school my whole life in California. Oh, like SoCal, like around here? Yep. Okay. Like LA and high school LA and then like middle school, like uh elementary, like in IE, like Rancho Fontana. Okay. So the Goth Money crew, where where did it begin to originate? Who who uh, brought these these minds together? It kinda it kinda had like Two starts. Yeah. Okay. Like it had East a, it, right had a it had a East Coast start, and that foundation is like DC, not like DC and Virginia. Okay. Between me and Cray, it was Terrorist Posse and Milf. I was in Milf. Cray was in Terrorist Posse. And you guys just sort of met and kicked it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, like off via internet, cause, like because we I had this shit going called Trill Wave. Okay. I didn't even know that there was other niggas on this side doing Trill Wave too at right. the same time, but. Cray, uh, Cray had hit me up and was like, yo, I like your shit. Let's link up. So I, I was in college. I told him to come up to Howard when uh, when I was still in school or whatever. And did either of you have a buzz going on or was it just on the sense that you looked at his music and you were like, all right, I can kind of fuck with this? Nah, we ain't had no buzz. Only person that in golf money that had a sort of a buzz was probably Luckily. Okay. Luckily had a he buzz. New York. Yeah. yeah, he had a been buzz. Making music. Yeah, he had a buzz like in Russia and down oh. there and like overseas. Oh, okay. So he was doing it online big at the time. Yeah, yeah not even real big, just, just like, like a thousand plays. Just, okay. Yeah. A thousand plays. Oh, a thousand's important, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of people who never hit that thousand. Yeah, you got to hit that <laughs> thousand play mark. <laughs> that shows you that you at least got something going on. <laughs> yeah. So you and Craig connect and then what? And then. Craig and were, were you mo- out here? Wait, but you were, were you mostly known as a producer, or were you doing everything yeah, at, always? At first, I was just producing and uh, doing videos. Okay. I went to college for, for uh, film production and painting. Right. So then um, I just started rapping because I was tired of people rapping over my beats all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it happens a lot. A lot. That's a Kanye West story while yeah. we're at it, yeah. It's like, damn, man, I'm about to rap over my beats. Fuck y'all. So what was your impression when you first met Craig? Were you like, oh, this guy's really good? or was I it- was like, damn, this dude... Uh, these niggas young, because uh-huh. I'm older than everybody. Yeah, how old are you? It seems like a very intergenerational group. Yeah, I'm 27. Okay. Yeah. And so, how old is Craig? 21? Craig is 17, 15, 14. Oh, right. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's one of the main rules of the, of the music industry is you can never really tell the truth about... Yeah, uh, I'm going to tell the truth about my age. Yeah. Because I'm going to stay 27 forever. Right. That, uh, <laughs> what, what about you? What age are you claiming? Shit, I'm 20. I just turned 20 last year. So you're 20, so you're actually like 24? That's what the music industry tells you. Man. You got to do. Lil Wayne's been lying nah, about his age since day I'm one. This nigga actually 20, bro. Oh, okay. 90, he actually 20. But um, I'm going to be 21 this year, so hopefully I don't get older after that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after 21, it's all bad. Yeah. Shit. So um, 
What, what was it like, the, the original? Well, so how did the name Goth Money come to be? Uh, so basically, yeah. Cray moved out here, and then pretty much he was with working with Utmost. And uh, like him and Utmost, they were out here working for Frank with 151. Okay. And at that time, like I met Cray. Cray hit me up. And he just fuck with my music. We all made music pretty much before Golf Money was yeah. even uh, developed. So it was like it was just like crazy that Cray hit me up and fuck with my music. And but he, then, he just hit you up like he liked what you're doing. Exactly, he hit me up and liked what I was doing. And I seen bro on the web like a few times, like just like fucking what I was doing. So then it was like random. Like he hit me, it was like yeah, I'm about to be in Cali and all that and link up and shit. I was like, word, I got a job at Mishka. Let's link up and do that shit. He was like, bet. We linked up at Mishka right there on Melrose and shit in Fairfax, and then we was working there. And then like Wait, probably, probably like a, a month after, he told me he was like, "Yeah, uh, I made this golf money shit, and you want to be in it?" And I was like, "Where was golf money?" He's like, "It's just some shit. You feel me? You gotta sign the contract, pay five dollars. You feel me?" I was like, <laughs> "Seriously?" And nah, nah, oh, nah, okay. nah, nah, we didn't have to do that. But. I was gonna be really impressed by the uh, entrepreneurial spirit yeah, there. Yeah. It's real boss shit though. It's like real entrepreneurship. So yeah. it's like he came with it, and I was just like, "Damn, I ain't never been a part of nothing." So it was like, "I'm a, I'm gonna do this shit." And then it was just like the golf money. And then after that. You feel me? He went back to D.C. or, like, Virginia or whatever, and then going hard with the yeah, golf money we, shit. That's it when was we, just... we started, uh, uh, we st- originally started doing shows. It was, uh, it was MILF, MILF, uh, we, like, MILF started, we started doing all the shows in D.C. And MILF was the name of the crew? or nah, it was MILF, like a, MILF, a is, company? MILF is another, another, uh, group I'm in. I was in, okay. I was in it, but I'm, I don't, I'm not in D.C. no more, so right. I can't really do shit. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it was MILF, and, this dude in D.C. was throwing the, all these shows. This nigga, Bombay Knox, was throwing all these shows. And uh, I knew Lofty. And I had met him at a bar one night. And I was drunk as shit. And I was like, yeah, I know Lofty. He was like, oh, you know Lofty? I'm trying to get him for uh, a show. Can you hit him up? And I was like, all right, I'm going I'm to hit him up. Hit him up. And then I got Lofty to do the show. And then Milf and Lofty did a show in D.C. And so we just kept on doing shows and shows and shows. And then eventually that I was like, Yo, if you book me, you need to book Cray too, right? Because that's my man's. So we we started doing like hella shows, and then it started popping and popping and popping and popping and popping and more popping. Okay. And then um, who, wait, who was the first person to say the words "Goth Money Records"? Cray, probably Cray. Okay, so yeah. he came up with it. But yeah. what was your reaction from every side? Because was, you know, I was the, like, "That's perfect, bro." You thought it was perfect. And so I, yeah. did you guys always have like a similar style that fit yeah. the name? When at the I time? met Cray, yo, it was like I was meeting myself. I'm gonna come clean because this nigga is like. He's like the same person as me, but not talking. You, you guys do seem pretty similar, like, but he's mess, much more quiet. Yeah, way yeah. more quieter. You feel me? So okay. it's like when I met bro, I knew me and him was like real similar because like everything we listened to, like the first thing we clicked on was Lil B. You feel me? Okay. And that was like it was like yeah, that shit is fire. So if yeah. a nigga, if I know it was not a lot of people at around two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve, nobody was listening to Lil B. In like, real life, on the internet, it seemed like everybody was listening nah, to on him. the internet. <laughs> He was going crazy. I, look, I put little. I put the whole Howard University College on to Little B. Okay, like, you can ask anybody that know me. Well, somebody yeah. needed to do it. You know, cause I put the whole. I like we had like we used to do like freshman orientation. We had people cooking on stage with okay. the full chef outfits. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you guys were, I mean, clearly, I think, influenced by Lil B. You yeah. just mentioned Lofty. You were probably really influenced by Metro Zoo, too, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, like, like Raider Clan had their shit popping off, but yeah. I, ain't, I didn't really listen to everybody in Raider Clan. I only listened to Metro Zoo and, um, and Space Ghost, basically. Okay. So... I fucked with that, Metro Zoo like a little yeah. bit. When I they met, came out, like they first came out, I was fucking with them. And then like they had so much music, I just couldn't yeah. keep up with it. So, That's a fact. It was like, tough to keep up. Like when Raider Clan split and shit, I was just like, fuck with Lofty okay. and, and uh, Posh God. And I would go to New York and film. Like I filmed one of their videos. I used to just be in New York all the time. So you tried out a lot of different creative pursuits. You were filming videos, making beats, rapping, doing events. Yeah, like real renaissance that, man. That's what I like. That's what I went to school for. Okay. Shit, well, what? What? Just, uh, just sit on the table. It's all good. Wait. So you're saying uh, you went to school for what? Just music, I went, business I went in school, general? No, I went to school for painting and film. Oh, okay. But the, like the shit that I was involved in on campus, like all the organizations, uh-huh. we used to do a lot of events. Oh, okay. And I and I went to school for film, so I would like do be doing like films and shit for the school. Right. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, okay. Makes but, sense. 
when I wasn't in class, I was making music in my dorm. Yeah. Turning you up a little bit there. Um, okay, so um, the the name Goth Money though, like, do, do you guys always feel like were you, were you wearing like all black even when you were young yeah, and stuff? Facts, facts. Like that was like pretty much Goth is like black. So like, and also this shit is inspired from Cash Money. Don't right? Get okay. Like when when I heard Goth Money, like I was gonna get, to, I was gonna say uh, when Craig brought it up to me, I was like. Yo, this shit sound like cash money. He's like, word, yeah. Like, I low key got it from that. And I was yeah. like, he was like, and it's just golf money, you feel me? Because we black, you feel me? It's just this the new shit. Yeah. And I was like, word, like I the, fuck with it. It's I, like a renaissance of yeah. golf. Like, right, yeah. Like, I, I didn't learn, like, I'm wearing all black right now because mm-hmm. I got a, some nice clothes on right now. You look good. <laughs> yeah. You look great. But when yeah. I was in college, I ain't had no money. I used to wear thrift store clothes. Oh, I used to okay. wear, like, Hella polo and see me. I rough. used to skateboard and shit back in the day, like when I was a youngin. So niggas used to wear all black and skinny jeans and all that. So I was on that. So it was just like I was on my when, shoe. And when I met Cray, he was on that too. So it was just like, yeah, we on this golf shit. Fuck it. Did you guys ever listen to much like metal or punk? Oh yeah, I, I definitely. I used to listen to for like two years straight, just straight heavy metal, rock and roll, like no rap music. Give me a couple bands uh, that you were I into. fuck with. Um, I fuck with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Wow, okay. You feel me? I fuck with Slipknot. I fuck All with right. corn. You feel me? I corn, fuck with. Okay. Yeah, I fuck with corn. I fuck with um Black Sabbath. You feel me? Shit like that. Um, anyway, so what's that one group that made that song Chop Suey? Oh, uh, uh, Disturbed. System of a Down. System of a Down. Yeah, I, had that, down. I, had that I fuck with them niggas. Xavier Wolf sat right here and told us that he loves System of a Down as well. So yeah. that might be a, a prevalent influence in the underground. Definitely. The Definitely. underground rap scene would not be what I it was. I fuck with the plain white tees, man. You feel me? <laughs> you gotta like, think of it like like a lot of shit. punk shit. A lot of like the punk, the punk scene low key started in DC too, like mm-hmm. with uh, Bad Brain. True, true, yeah. So Minus that, Red, all that, that shit back then. That energy is still there. Like you can probably ask Gleesh. Gleesh was in a in a band, go-go band. Right, he told so us all about it. Yeah, that shit right there. Like when I'm, I can give you an example. When I first seen Chief Keef and right. I seen everybody with the dreads, I thought that was I thought Chief Keef was from DC. Oh, uh, okay. Because that's like some DC shit. Like to be we squatted up with all your niggas and shit, right, like yeah, yeah. going really hard. Putting on your hood and whatever, right? Like, I don't know. It's just like that's like some tribal, real tribal shit. Were you a Chief Keith fan when he first came out? Yeah, I yeah. was. Yeah, I was in school in Chicago yeah. at the time. When I was he in came co- out. I was oh, in so college. You were in high school. I was in high school. Ooh, okay, so junior probably, in high school. Because I love how they always will talk about Chief Keith and say that he was popping with the high schools and that that's what really propelled him. Was like all those early YouTube videos were coming from like the eighteen year old kids and yep. shit. The fifteen yeah, it year old was. kids. Like I was, was in a, school and somebody was like, "Yo, this, you heard Chief Keith, bro? He's rapping in, in high school and smoking weed." I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, <laughs> that's it holding was a, guns." It was a I'm lot. Like, of, it was a lot of. It was a lot of Chief Keith stuff. Right. Chief Keith just. When Lil B uh, did a remix of yeah, whatever, the bang shit, the bang jank, that's what that's, that's when he popped. That's right. when he popped because because I ain't really know Chief Keep. Like I heard the bang shit before I heard yeah. bang song, the the Lil B version, and then the Lil B one excelled the shit. Right, right. totally made the shit pop. Chief Keep said that shit too in an yeah. interview. He was like. He uh, Lil B put him on like when Lil B re- remixed his song. That's when like mad people started knowing about Chief Keef, and that was crazy. I was in, in Chicago and. I like literally witnessed the like change of when Chief Keef came out and changed like Chicago like with style. music and style facts. Yeah. Well, Marcy, what kind of hip hop were you listening to when you were uh, younger? Did you ever have like a backpack backpack rap nerd phase? Uh, I forget I used to listen who to was. DJ Shadow. Oh yeah, I fucked with that uh, introducing Sh- album back yeah. when I was in like sixth, seventh grade. Yeah. But basically, all the rap I listen to is my, my I listen to whatever my brother and sister and father listen to. Like okay, so there's a lot of music in the household yeah, growing up. Funkadelic. Okay. All that like I like in high school I used to listen to a lot of DJ Screw and Go Go, and I'm trying to think. So you guys were kind of I think geared to be popular rappers in this day and age because you had very diverse interests. And right, I think yeah, that right. that's where it's at Come now. Come from real know? backgrounds. Yeah. Like, my right. family's like a real art flat. Like, we, my uncle's are like a painter. Uh-huh. He's in like museums and shit. Right. Like, my family's like real into art and cooking and shit like that. Okay. You a good cook? Hell yeah. I'm, Re- I'm a chef. What would you make if you were uh, going to take like a, a Marcy nice was lady catching on a fish when we was making yeah. the album. When we was catching making a, fish? Yeah, when we was, making, fish. When I, when we was making the Trillionaires album, I was catching fish off the off the dock on the backyard. Really? And cooking them just... Shh, 
Wow. Yeah. I can feel that that fish, fresh fish energy when I listen to that album, actually. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> hey, but were your parents ever uh, concerned about like the lyrical content and the rap music they were listening to? Or is it, were they ever upset about the violence? And- well, like when I, was a, when I was a little kid, we was in church, so we okay. couldn't even really... We was listening to Christian rap. Right. Oh, I was geez. listening to hella Christian rap. Like, like who, DC Talk? Uh, not... <laughs> no. <laughs> that was some corny. I didn't answer, like right? them. No? Yeah. I liked... T- it was T-Bone. Was listening at, to Kirk and Franklin. T-Bone, SS Mom. They okay. from Cali Right But you got the soul Because they were probably Making you listen to a lot of Like R&B And, and church music And shit like that Right Where is Kirk, Franklin? Kirk Franklin Okay <laughs> I, 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 Like that Silver and Gold song Right I rock with the Silver and Gold Jane. <laughs> <laughs> that Jane go hard But what about like Rock music Were you ever exposed To that from your family Or where, how did you guys Get interested Funkad- in that Funkadelic was my rock Okay Funkadelic And my mom listened to Like uh, Pink Floyd uh-huh. I love Pink Floyd Oh uh, okay And like Michael Jackson, hello, Prince. When did you guys Prince. first start so, making music, though? I started making music on down there. I was like 13. Like, I started recording. You uh-huh. feel me? Like, just random shit. But when I really started making music, when I was 16, for real, that's when I started really recording. It's just like, I'm going to go to a studio or I'm going to record on a real microphone. And, like, you know, because that's how, that's how it was like. It's just all a practice. I've always been rapping yeah. since I was a baby. Like, right. I got videos of me in diapers, rapping gibberish, or whatever, just <laughs> being funny, you know, like, and that's always just been me. Like, I always, rapping has just been, like, something that I love to do because I just always looked at TV and saw rappers and just, like, that's always what I wanted to be growing up as a kid. But it's interesting because you're a lot younger, so yeah. you kind of have a more, like, uh, rap-specific right. taste than exactly. what Marcy's describing, I guess. Yeah. I, I I started making music in the fifth grade. Like, I, started, yeah. I was playing trumpet. Uh-huh. And then all through middle school, high school, still playing trumpet. I was in the marching band and shit. But then I got a, a karaoke machine. And then I figured out how to chop and screw on that shit. Oh, okay. Like, I would just put my finger on it. And yeah, I was going to ask when the, like, the beat making side of things come into play. Beat making strictly came from chop and screw music. I, oh, would, okay. I used to make chop and screw music first. I, would, I used to go into DJ Who. Okay. Rare, very rare. That's man. what's up. You guys watch skate videos at all? Yeah, I nah. do. You know who Beagle is? Yeah. We just Beagle. interviewed Beagle, and he was like Word. going on and on about chopping screw shit and That's playing hard. it on an app on his phone and going That's crazy hard. with it, yeah. mixing and shit. Exactly. He had never heard Finito before, and we made him mix that. That's hard. Chop and screw it and That's shit hard. somehow with this app on his phone. Beagle from Baker, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. He's hilarious. Right. That's dope. Um, all right. So when you guys got together... What was like the creative process like with you? What, what about you two specifically meeting? Because you guys uh, both we met in New we, York. Yeah. Okay, we met in New York, and it was the first time we all met. And it was me, Marcy, and Luckily. Yeah. And uh, like Marcy ain't never met Luckily, and I met Luckily, and I was the first one out of golf money to meet Luckily. Cause okay. you feel me? It was crazy because they thought Luckily was a fake person at the time. <laughs> <He> was <laughs> no, like, we, well, <laughs> fake person, we used to huh? call Luckily a digital like a computer <laughs> program. Because I used to just be in New York all the time. I used to be like, yo, look, let's link up. And he'd be like, yo, I got to wash my niche, yo. I got to do this. Oh, like, you don't like, have an excuse? Yeah, but then once once I met Luckily, and then I was like, okay. Yeah. I understand why you, why you actually had to do all these things. Because exactly. this is what you be on. You be doing all these things. Well, exactly. So he's like a grown-ass man with yeah. responsibilities, yeah. basically. He got hella yeah, responsibilities, hella phones. <laughs> he got hella people calling them. Hella phones? He's really got multiple phones? Hella phones. Yeah. I'm talking about 20... 30, 40 phones. How many you phones you got? I got like about three, you know. Really? How many phones, phones you got? I only got one right now. Okay. But I used to have hella phones. Right. Because this yeah. is something that a lot of rappers talk about. You know, Rob yeah. Banks is two phone shorty. I think OJ the Juice Man used to talk about having six phones or some uh, shit. Yeah, it's Ju- Juice Man been had phones. Yeah. I know Cray got probably like 10, 12 phones. I don't have, like, I never, I always had Cray number for about two weeks and then I don't have his number oh, okay. again. <laughs> this nigga have too many phones. What do you do when you have like multiple phones? Or what? Like, what is the most likely way that you would separate you just the content gotta, on each one? Yeah, you just got to use on like how you how you use a regular phone it's just like if you ain't using that phone or when that bitch die i'm gonna use this one like, like when i had when i had two two phones i had the flip yeah flip. boys be having the flip phones you have the on flip deck. and that's the you won't have a cricket line because right. that's like 15 dollars right month. wait but is the flip phone almost always the trap phone that you're doing all your dirt on or what nah no, i was, okay. I was, yeah, I was flip phone. You, i'm calling my mom off the mom phone. off the yeah. track oh okay and then you have oh, the the iphone Right. Just straight data. Apps. Exactly. Yeah. Such Internet and such. Yeah. And all that. Okay. Yeah. 
Interesting. So, you, you, have you guys ever had a trap phone? You guys sell drugs? Nah, I had a trap phone before, man. Yeah. You did? Yeah, I had a trap phone. Well, how come? Because you were doing dirt or because you just wanted I mean, one? I'd be trapping off the flip phone sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it's just life, man. You got to get it how you live, man. I feel like in 2016, it's more normal for a drug dealer to just use their iPhone for some reason. I feel like the yeah. flip phone I mean, went iPhone out. definitely would make you more a lot, a lot of money than a uh, trap phone because a uh, trap phone, flip phone, you can't, ain't no internet on that bitch. You can't, can't find text. nobody location. Can't promote your drug dealing yeah, business on, Inst- on Juicy J's Instagram comments. Man. <laughs> I ain't never had the trap. I like I ain't never had the trap. Like okay. I, I sold like t- probably like two zips, like two big zips, and that's it. Like all my niggas trapped around mm-hmm. me, so I used to just smoke for you. See me, <laughs> I always been around that type of shit growing up. Yeah. Like 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 my father got killed, you feel me? So I don't have a dad. He got killed for selling drugs. But you feel me? That's just always been around my lifestyle, just people selling drugs or, you know, gang banging and all that shit. It's just, that's what happens in Ch- when you're from Chicago. Like, right. everything is the same. I'm from the north suburbs, so it's not as bad as the city of Chicago, south, uh, south side and shit, but, like, where Chief Keefe is from. But the north suburbs, north Chicago, like, Waukegan and near Six Flags, if you ever go out there, it's, it's right, it's, like, right around where I'm from, man. Okay. That shit is pretty crazy out there. The only thing I trapped is is clothes, beats. Yeah, that's what, what I try to clothes? trap now. Selling honestly. them, like the merch. That okay, shit yeah. tra- that shit is straight is trapping. Right, yeah, is yeah, trapping, yeah. Merch trapping merch is is fire. It's, that's trapping, the best trapping trap. verses and hooks. trapping verses and hooks. See, it's good that you guys videos. can see the direct connection because that's kind of how yeah. I feel with most shit I do too. It's yeah. like in my mind, it's like I can make a YouTube video and right. make this amount of money, but like. That makes selling an ounce of weed or an ounce yeah. of coke not seem like, as attractive. I'd rather buy. I'd rather buy the jig. I rather. <laughs> I, I don't want to sell that shit because that's like a that's like such a low frequency right. type situation that you just like always in yeah. all the time. Like, and the math of like, oh, I'm gonna make a shirt for like six dollars and then sell it for like twenty dollars yeah. or whatever is. It's basically like saying it's like, a lot better right, than like so, weed math. Like the right. weed, with the weed math, you got like say you got to start from the you got to break pro- it down. You got to start yeah. from the first process, which is growing the weed. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah. basically, when you trap in merch, you growing your, you growing <laughs> yeah. your merch, and then you you putting that shit out there. Like, oh, I, got, out I got that. Sh- I got I got these fire ass hats. It's crap. Right. It's basically crap. Yeah. It's crap. Like whoever want to wear clothes. All the time, like it's yeah, crap. Our merch is going thing. crazy. Is it crazy? Yeah. I was gonna yeah, yeah. S- fucking tell one of you guys to bring me a shirt, but I forgot. Damn, Damn. I could have bought you a hat. Ooh, yeah. all right. I would, I would rock a hat for the, yeah. for the Goth Money Squad. Right. Um, so, so what are the main like uh, promotional means that you use to to push merch online? I mean, really, just our music. Really, yeah. right. I feel like our music do a lot of the pushing yeah. itself because we promote golf money in our music so much, so much and then people just look it up. Yeah, you know, and like with the artwork and the videos and everything, it's just like so golf. Like we won't even have we ain't have golf money merch on, and people will be looking at our clothes like, "What's that? What is that?" Like, right. and this clothes that people giving to us are just our own shit that we put together, and it's just you know it, we we just our style is like. We we set trends and that's that's just all that we really much do. Like and we don't really try to set trends. We just just, just do it and that's just that, that's just the the key to it. Really, like um, what's up? Yeah. Were, were you always interested in like fashion and shit? I was. Hell, I was. Hell no. I was, hell no. Always. Nah. But we were. You, I was. Did more, you dress a little different from early? Yeah. Age? That, I def, I definitely dress different. Than right. Everybody. That's the f- matter. Of, that's a fact. Like all my friends, you say I dress weird. Cause I wouldn't have, and that's I all of had, us too. Like I wouldn't have the Jordans. I might have the, like the Air Max or something like some right. running some Nike running shoes. Like and when I was in elementary school, all my friends would be like, "Yo, nigga, you got the running, <laughs> the Nike runners on. You ain't got the Jordans." Yeah, I ain't never get Jordans. My my brother gave me all. My I never Jordans. had a pair of Jordans. Yeah, my I my I broke my mom was a single mother, so I ain't had no Jordans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just white as hell. I had <laughs> all the Jordans. When I, was a kid. I ain't even know what Jordans was until probably like ninth grade. Right. Damn, you I, was late. You know, yeah, I, I was like, Jordan's nigga, fuck. <laughs> like, I knew, I, was it, in I knew who Michael Jordan was, and yeah. I knew he had shoes, but like to say, oh, those the ones, the twos, the threes. Right. The like, idea that this was like a real thing yeah, to like be interested team. in. I, I was playing in video Chicago games and shit. Yeah. You didn't have yeah, Jordan's I was outside. As a kid. I was outside throwing sticks, eating honeysuckles, and I'm like, I some said, real, <laughs> some real country. Are you guys sneakerheads now, though? Hell no. You got some fucking. Those are Jordans on right now. 
shit. Yeah, I got Jordans <laughs> on, but fucking these is these is some. That's every day. These are the Martian Jordans. You do, I got some. Like, I got they, some they boots cool, on, but man. Yeah. I got some fucking. Kenneth, now that's golf. Kenneth Cole boots, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, these ain't some real. Some real the golf kick you in the ass boots. Right. That is the the big clunky Doc Martens or whatever. That's a very yeah. golf statement from when I was in high school. Yeah. If there was a kid out there and he was looking for some advice on how to look a little bit more goth, how to fit in with you guys, what would be the first step that you would tell him to take? Just dress like yourself. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the most thing. That's the that's the key. To be God, because like, I always want to God. dress like myself. My yeah. mom wouldn't let me dress like how I would when I grew up, like because I'm from a place where you can't dress like that. You feel me? Right. So it was just like I always wanted. To, like I had to go to school, and before school, I would go to side my my house, change my pants to my skinny jeans, and you know, it was just like it was crazy. Like, and my mom didn't fuck with that shit. But growing up, she just realized like that's how I am. That's how I dress. And, yeah. You know, it, that's to, always, that's how, you feel me? I, so if I was to tell somebody, I, like, just dress how you want to dress. Right. Not used, how anybody else would dress you. I used to wear uh, moccasins. <laughs> moccasins and, like, Clarks and shit. That's dope. That's how I got into my, the, like, the boots. And mm-hmm. then I got some some other, some more Clarks. And then I, these are my, like, my latest boots. Were you guys always just, like, really, really confident in yourselves, even from Hell the yeah. age? Like, yeah. to, to be able to rock the moccasins at school or whatever, I feel like it would just, you'd have to have a lot of confidence. Too. I yeah, moccasins. Every, yo, I, I see. Uh, this is like, still moccasins like, from like. CBS everybody was on the Sperry's right when here. I was in college. And I was like, because I went to like, I went to Howard. That's like a real like uh, black pre- prestige black school. Yeah. So everybody used to be on the Sperry's with the polos. And oh, shit. okay. So you really stood out in college yeah, then? Yeah, yeah. Because okay. I used to, I was a I was an art painting major. Like I used to walk around with painted vans. Right. Painted. Uh, dunks and shit. Okay. So I stood out, and I was like in the top organization and shit. So I stood out. What was the chicks like in, in college for you? Easy or were it you? Was, it wasn't more so easy. It was just like a lot of them. The ratio yeah. was eight to one. Really? Yeah. Why? How the hell does that happen? Who like who like think on the on like, like I th- I always think about college because I went to college, but yeah. on the average, the average citizen of America ain't going to college. True. Yeah. So. But the girls are the girls are because they stay focused. Right. But guys are like smoking or trapping, and yeah, chasing the hoes and okay. shit. <laughs> so it's rare that a, a black dude's finna go to college. Okay. So so do, I, are there much higher rates of like black women going to college? Hell I yeah. guess that kind of makes yeah, sense. Yeah, All right. Yeah, definitely. 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 Okay. The rates the rates probably have gone up. Uh, black males going to college, but especially right now, they today and age, you like you probably like. You could probably come up on doing something else and not go to college. Anywhere with a eight to one female to male ratio is a fucking. I, w- I would I would live anywhere for that to be the case. That sounds amazing. Yeah, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's why bro. Drake talk about Howard. Yeah, that's oh, like okay. think like what I could like Wale used to be at Howard just I hanging at, out because the girls yeah, were so fucking ripe. Yes, bro. <laughs> really? Okay. He used to be on the ca- ca- every like football players, basketball players. Used to be on the campus pulling up with with uh, Bentleys and shit because it's just the hottest black chicks in the world. Yeah, there. the hottest hottest black girls from America. That must be rough for just a regular old guy living there when you got fucking Wale just rolling up trying to take your shine. I mean, you just like you be like <laughs> the thing like Wale Wale did not like Wale did not fuck with me because I hated on this nigga on Twitter and he knew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because like Wale the, be knowing. You know, He's Wale the most be, sensitive Twitter thug ever. Huh? I heard I all feel, about this. I feel Facts. him. I feel him though. I feel him though. I feel him. I feel him, but I, but I don't feel him. You right. feel me? I, I understand why he do that. Right. But it's like okay, Wale, just just ignore it. Just laugh. But wait, so how did he communicate to you that he don't fuck with you? He said all something right. to you in real life or something? It's a, all right. So, uh, you know the Ghostface articles. The fake ones, yeah, the yes. fake ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. That he wrote, big, a, he big put, ghost or something. Yeah, yeah. big ghost. So he put Wale on there. Yeah, let me like, get that weed. I gotta make sure I got enough for for a blunt tonight. <laughs> He's gonna smoke yeah. off this otherwise. <laughs> Fast that thing, man. He said he was like uh, uh, Wale, probably cry when he have sex. And I, I was in college, so I was like, I was, I was like, this was early Twitter, so right. niggas ain't even really know what Twitter was really. And it didn't occur so to I, you that some famous person was gonna yeah, see it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think Wale was gonna stoop down to my college ass and be like, right. oh, you. But he he responded. He was like. Say that shit when I'm at your school. Oh my and I was God. like, <laughs> I was like, oh, this nigga responded. I was like, yo, 
I'm gonna be in class taking a test. <laughs> <laughs> Wale probably had a conversation like that this week. Like that's the funny thing about Wale. I was reading an article with him in a magazine one time or something, and they said that he just is on Twitter all the time, just scrolling through his mentions. Uh, it's like, dude, if you're that famous, you got to give yourself a break. If especially someone like him that's nah, getting hated but, on but all the time. But you gotta understand, DC is the capital of hating. Right, niggas okay. hate hard in DC. Okay, like. like it's like it's the capital of hating. You got you got to realize this, like for real. Why do you think that is? It's small. It's uh, small. It's a ten mile radius city. Right. Like everybody know each other. Everybody know each other, but it's like everybody is also tight. Everybody in DC also has flavor and style because we got access of so many different cultures, like government, art, th- whatever, whatever right. the fuck. And then we got all the cultures there. We got. Black people, Asian people, African people, right. European people. So we just like everybody's the best of everything. So you just it's a lot of hating going on. Is there a big influence in DC you think from the fact that like for like young people in the rap world or whatever, is there a big influence from the fact that like the whole political system is there and that you got all these crazy mm-hmm. politic political things going on all the time? Uh, or is that you, just kind of like some weird you, shit? You would probably, on you up would the probably hill? have to get into some more uh, <coughs> Like some righteous mind type rappers from DC. There's right. a lot of those in DC. Is there? Hell okay. yeah. There's some like righteous mind rappers in DC. It's like some real like. Some yeah, real, that's how like Chicago's pretty yeah. much is because it's so much violence and right. all this shit going on. It's Both like, things, Chief Keith yeah. and that, are like a natural reaction exactly. to how crazy it is. Exactly. Yeah. That's like, exactly what you know. This is bro from DC. This dude, uh, the homie Nate Gretzky. He's real tight. He's, okay. But uh, he's like an underground rapper from DC. But he's his his his, his shit is like. Way next different from our shit, right? Uh, in his homie Vince, uh, Vince, like Vaughn or something like that. I forgot what his home, what the homie name is, but uh, Nate Gretzky. I hate to go back to it, but why is hating on Wale such a sport? Hating on Wale is a sport because he just respond. He responds. <laughs> I don't do it no more. I don't do it no more though, because it's like I'm not about to hate on this right. man. But it's weird because I mean he's a good rapper. I mean, I don't really listen to him, but I've definitely heard Wale records that were great, whatever. But I don't, you know, there's something about it where you just want to hate on him. I don't know what it is. Somebody just ends up being that. that I think because his name is Wale. That is a funny <laughs> name. Yep, that's a good point. He's he real Nigerian, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think his real name is Olu Wale. That's, okay. I, I think that's the the long name of Wale. Do you think uh, DC in general has love for Wale? Yeah, okay. probably. Like, niggas hate on Wale because that's what niggas do in D.C. Right. You hate on niggas. You be like, oh, nigga, I'm about to fry your ass up. Like, <laughs> boy, I'm about to... Like, you just fry niggas. But that's like, it's low-key. You trying... I don't know, man. But don't you feel like Drake is like the hero of Toronto <laughs> and like... No, G- man. Game or rather, YG I, is like the hero I'd of rather, L.A. I much rather niggas hate on Wale than Wale. I mean, Drake than Wale. Okay. Really? You're not a big Drake fan? Uh, not nah, like I'm not like Drake is a good rapper, <laughs> yeah. but I don't like Drake, bro. Really, as a person, he seems weird. Dude. Nah, not, I don't even know him. I, I, not as a person, I don't know him as a person. But his I don't public like, personality, I don't like his artists. I okay. don't like his artists. Okay, his artistry. Interesting. What about you? What's your Drake thoughts? Uh, I mean, I don't have no no really a, like judgment on Drake, but I fuck with his music. Like I fuck with his music. Like, and I fuck with him as a person too. He had good songs, but yeah. I don't like them. I always hear what an asshole he is. I don't say like, I'm really. not the type of dude that just you're gonna be listening to Drake by myself. Like if I'm with a shorty, I'll be put the Drake. My on. girl, my but, girl, listen to Drake like when Hotline Bling come on. But ooh, I don't, okay. I don't like that. I don't like that. I song. like Drake enough that I bought his most recent album on iTunes like the moment it came out and banged it for like two weeks. Bad, I'm just gonna throw that out there. I'm kind of a hoe. He's a good, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like girls fuck with Drake heavy, but right, yeah. like I'm more into like UGK. Okay. Like, well, Drake's very into UGK as well. I bet he made I that bet. whole fucking what was that one song with Wayne and, and Bun? Yeah, back in the day. I don't yeah. know. What did you grow up listening to, Kane? Like, Man, I listen to. I want to know what your influence is. Did you consider yourself up, a Cali kid or what? Hell nah. I'm always a Chicago kid. I okay. just lived in California, and when I would go to Chicago, people would think I'm California because how high I dress. You okay. Me? So, but I always been Chicago, and I always been. That's just been me. So growing up, I listened to like you feel me, my cousins and shit. They used to have like old cassette tapes of like Three Six Mafia, Bone Thugs and Harmony and shit, and like Tupac and shit, like um, fucking. 
no limit cash money and shit like all that shit and so like i just listened pretty much that and then that shit just opened my mind because that shit is so underground it's not even to what regular people are listening to like on regular hip-hop like it's just because most people in chicago listen to like common and, and like you know like twister and shit and i was in chicago i was I listening like to three six mafia yeah, yeah i listened to do or die too but it was a lot of underground artists just in chicago that like had that you you know it's just like a real dark conscious type underground sound and it's real fast kind of like twister but it's a uh, it's this one group called Psychodrama and my oh, uncle yeah, yeah. yeah my uncle used to play that shit and I just like I always like grew up like damn near wanting to sound like that when I was rapping and it was like listening to that music I only wanted to listen to that and it was just and hear that and just that underground sound is just like crazy because that's what I really grew up on, like everything in the underground, like to from where it goes from, like from let's say, uh, I would say like from Bone Thugs and like Three Six Mafia to like um, Outcast and shit to you feel me Ghetto Boys and shit and uh, you feel me then it goes to like Lil John and them niggas like Gucci Mane, Waka Flocka and shit like. All that shit, bro. That shit. You really, you just took us through a, a journey Word. through time of, yeah, of, bro, of like, a lot of great that. rap. All that shit. <laughs> 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 Yo, all right. Th- here's a question: What role do you play, like in comparison, or, like on an average Goth Money track? Because you know, you and Cray are, are supplying a lot of the vocals at this yeah. point, and you guys are very different stylistically. You got a super deep voice. He's yeah. got a crazy voice, and he's got a lot of effects on it, and he's right. howling. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how, how would you describe the interplay between the two styles? Man, I feel like our style is like just like it's mixed together and it's like a whole bunch of sauce and it's just like niggas, it's just a whole bunch of new new formula of uh, or new wave of of just what this underground has 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 put out. You feel me? And that's what it is. You feel me? Like we just we just rapping basically originally how we would want it to sound. For the next generation, you feel me? Because that's what we doing. We put it on for the culture of 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 rap, like in the underground ser- underground scene, and and just music period. And that's just what it is. Like I, my sound and Cray sound is, I feel I feel like it's <laughs> similar, but me and Bro got different sounds. Like you feel me? Because he will get on a song and he could he could sing. You feel me? He could R and B. Freak some R and B shit, you feel me? I could freak some R and B shit too, but it's just gonna be on some on some more like you feel me, like some some Brian Knight type well, shit. You feel me? Like who's more likely to take the lead in terms of like the formation of the basis it, of the it depends, song, it depends like the flow who, and the hook, whatever. I mean, it depends who feeling the song because. I'll be feeling the song and then I'll be like, man, I got the hook, bro. Like, yeah. and the, the hook just go crazy. And can't a hook, can a hook maker. Okay, yeah, but I, will you write a hook and tell Cray to sing it? I mean, Cray will hear the hook and he'll probably hear the hook. And if I hear bro saying it better than I do, I tell him to say it. Okay, but if I'm saying the hook, he already fuck with it and he just he already got something for it, and that's how I be. And, and when bro got a hook, he come up with a crazy hook, and then we I hop on it like it's crazy. But are you guys usually recording together, or is this like an email process back and forth usually? At first, it was a uh, email process, but I've we both we've all seen each other record before, so okay. it's just it was like when we in the studio together. That's like when we our it was our first time recording together when we made the album. Oh, okay. So, yeah, like all six of us had never recorded together at, at one spot. Yeah, it was all that was the first. Oh, okay, so yeah. that's the energy that was going on there, and yeah. there was fresh fish being uh, yeah. grilled yeah. up. Fresh, like we was st- we stayed on the water, like right. really, yeah. really off the water. What In kind North of fish Miami. were you catching? Uh, bass. Okay, and, uh, like some some shit that was uh, a group a grouper or something like that. And what was the average uh, side that you would be serving this with? Uh, pasta. Oh, okay. I was making like like fish pasta, like boiling the whole body with some uh, butter, some milk. Nice. Yeah. Are you the RZA of the group? Low key, I might be RZA. Yeah. So do you, do you take like a leadership role in a sense? Like you're the dude doing the merch. Yeah. You I make ta- the beats I, for the most part. I right? take a leadership role, but I try to like really give everybody my knowledge. Cause uh-huh. since I'm the yeah, because you're older, and so yeah. that that I think is important. You know, you kind of. Young guys can definitely benefit from having an older dude with a little bit more perspective on the history of rap and shit, yeah. right? 
So, so are you likely to like come up with a beat as well as like some of the song structure and just say like, like, do you ever think of the hooks? Is that something you ever get involved with? Uh, I every like my hooks, uh, I do by myself. Okay, really, like on the album, I really let them do like every like the younger dudes do their thing on the album. Yeah, Marcy come them. with the the fucking fire beats. ass beats, like, mm-hmm. and that's when it, you know that's Marcy on the beat, and then I'm like, damn. Like, we had made the first track, and I'm just like, Marcy Man cooking hella jams. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, but- and it's just like, that nigga really cooking on the beat, and I'm just, I hear this shit, I'm just telling you what it really is, because that's how a rap should be. It should be telling you how the beat really feel, like, how you feel on the beat. Like, like, But is there a totally different mentality between, like, SoundCloud random tracks and what you did on the album because your SoundCloud is like hella based. It's very like my SoundCloud is based. Is you sort of zoning out? My SoundCloud is. I just recorded a track and I'm I uploaded. I didn't even this is a stream of consciousness, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But I got some shit that I have on my computer that that is that is not that. But when you guys made the album, you sort of made like something that's a lot more hook oriented, a lot of you know strong beats just going in. On the album, I I did a lot of writing. Oh, okay. Writing. You feel me? I had to write because I was like, I'm in the perfect situation right now. Right. We got the water. You got to make a different kind of song <laughs> at that to, point, I'm right? I'm about to make some real fire. Yeah. Like the uh, the Cuban links. Right. That my verse on that joint it goes really hard. Right. You feel me? What's That's, your favorite song off that whole album? Uh, Hell is you doing? Okay. Hell is you doing? That shit go hard. Who are you? Shit, I fuck with that Vice City. I'm gonna come clean. That Vice City go crazy. Okay. Yeah, but um, I also fuck with uh. What you call it? Uh, the movie shit. Okay. Yeah, movie is like one of my favorite. Joints. Gucci Racks is like literally the Gucci hottest Rax. songs off the. Off yeah, the Gucci album. Racks is the hottest song. So what, what's you guys' mentality with putting your shit out? Do you guys go to SoundCloud right away with the nah, album, or you you try to nah, sell it through uh, Bandcamp and iTunes and uh, shit, right? Bandcamp. Sell it on Bandcamp. Bandcamp. Okay. And now we now I'm pushing this Young Cloud shit. Uh-huh. Yeah, Marcy, I made this uh, website called YoungCloud.com. Right. Because SoundCloud is doing their thing, so we trying to do like we trying to cater towards more of the indie artists. So we about to set up like a whole situation that'll benefit indie artists. Okay. Like, like the same way we. I can't really say everything. Well, what makes it different than Bandcamp? Bandcamp. Uh, Bandcamp. Uh, you can sell your music. Album. You can sell it. Okay. But this is about to be something totally different. Like on like. A whole different thing. So you're trying to work with like a lot of different underground artists to, to do this or what? Uh, it's not. Yeah, I'm trying to work. I'm trying to have young uh, underground artists participate in what's about to fall out with the what the rollout with the Young Cloud. Okay. Shit. Like once we roll out everything that's going down. Young Cloud is basically the new SoundCloud. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what's up. But we about to put some things that's gonna really like. Oh shit! I need to get on this. Right. Yeah. That's what's up. What uh do you do you guys ever have like dreams of taking the merch to like a, a like a Hell yeah. a huge About level to, like what what I mean the merch is it? just like man like it's for it's for the culture yeah. and for the for the for it's the like, people man it's like a canvas yeah like, because like we didn't never like think that that was gonna happen like we was just gonna have merch like Marcy just made it. he just started doing that and then it's just like. Like, like niggas the didn't shit even, that we rapped like, about, it just came into life. Like, yeah. and the clothes that we started to wear, we was like, "Fuck, it, we just gonna start making our own clothes." Like, and that's just how it came into play. And now it's making us money, and it's like we gonna yeah. just like make that shit more of a responsibility to 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 just put out and make more of. Cause, I think that's what a lot yeah. of people in the underground too are kind of realizing that like yeah. they, if you're a popular underground rapper, like the the chance to sell clothes might even be better than the chance to sell music or tickets. Right. You know. That's yeah. a fact, though, because, yeah. I mean, we was on Young Lean's tour, and he made at least, like, five bands off the just clothes. Really? Just <laughs> More than five bands. <laughs> More than show, I mean. A lot of people saying. asked about that. What, what, how did you guys get uh, plugged in with Young Lean early on? Uh, Lean, he Lean. reached out to us, yeah. man. He, I was just watching that uh, V-Files performance the other day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he hit us up on the email. It was like, yo, I'm trying to fuck with Black Cray. Uh-huh. Yeah. Golf Money on the tour. Uh, what are you, where are y'all going to be? On these dates. Right. And I was like, oh, um, how much are y'all paying? I was yeah. like, we need a thousand. And they were like, well, we don't have a thousand, but I think you guys should come. Yeah. And that's what, this was Baron on the email. Right. You ever you heard of Baron Machat? Uh no, no. Baron was like this dude, he was uh 
he was like really like a gatekeeper of like yeah, a R.P. Barron, man. Yeah. Of the whole Young Lean thing? Yeah, he was yeah. his American manager. American oh, okay. manager. But he had a lot of shit uh, popping off. Like this dude, uh, Dean Blunt, Arca, uh, all these artists that I've never heard of uh-huh. until I met Barron. But it was like a, th- like a whole entity of shit that was popping off that was really big. Okay. And now he was fucking with Young Lean. So right. Young Lean was a part of this shit. So uh, he's, he reached out to us and was like, yo... Uh, come to New York and we'll pay for everything. Right. So we came to New York, did the show, and then we did a, the second tour in the wintertime. Right. Yeah. yeah. And how was all that for you guys? That shit was dope. Shit it was, was a tight. like great exposure and experience time because like, like we was on it. We wasn't really on that like level of performing yet and yeah. like just for him like to come out to America for the first time and just fuck with us like out of all the people he was fucking with or who hit him up and shit he fucked with us cause he really was inspired by our music really right. and he like you know like as people he just felt like me like me and Young Lean were like the same people you feel me yeah. like and he just he's a cool, he's yeah, a cool, he's a cool dude, dude. Like, you don't look like Young Lean nah I don't uh, look like him at all <laughs> you don't look like Young Lean but we Young got Lean the same is definitely Young Lean yeah, Young Lean is Young like Lean like his name is Lean Doer right yeah <laughs> See, I remember uh, you guys opening for him at a show at Los Globos, like yeah, uh, that was maybe a, crazy a year ago. Show, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I showed Sherman. up with Ian Connor. We got right the fuck in. Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sherman, yeah, Sherman, yeah, all them boys, Young Good. Yeah, they all go crazy, yeah. man. They just they real students of this music shit, and they study Americans like music, and they just like you feel me are real ins- inspired by like, yeah. and it's crazy. They on like, they they on they real like Daft Punk shit. You yeah, know? like Young Sherman and Young Good. The niggas White go Armor, crazy. They really on they Daft Punk shit. So you guys been inspired a lot by their music? Are they yeah, some yeah. of the dudes you fuck I mean, with? They production more it's so. Like their their production more so. <laughs> they they was probably inspired off for our performance because we mm-hmm. performed before them in New York and we went cr- really crazy and then they came out and they because they not from America right. so. They they fucking with us. We some they Ameri- catching we, all our vibes. Yeah, we like, Amer- we real American boys. Like we right. coming out. We they over here fucking with us. They from Sweden. They don't they, they don't be on what we be on. We showing them like the American culture. You know what I thought was mad funny is uh after that show, me and Xavier and Chris Travis we went to the after party yeah. and fucking Young Lean was drinking Bud Ice. Yeah, yeah Bud bro. Ice. I thought that was kind of funny because yeah. I never seen anybody in America yeah. drink Bud it, Ice. Like we put like we show we show, we was like yo you gotta come out here and. And just absorb all of this. Yeah, I got young lean, this. some real lean out here. Yeah. Man. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, was he inexperienced when it came to lean uh, at the nah, time? Nah, he know what he doing with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he a real lean doer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah. That's right. good to hear. He's a cool. He's a cool dude, man. Have you guys? Uh, well, who else do you guys feel uh, close to in the underground? Or like, do you feel uh, like? I mean, a, any kind of kinship with? Man, we fuck with. I feel Shit, like that's, that's really golf money. Golf for real, like we fuck with golf money and milf. You know right, yeah. I mean? milf is my home. It's right. like that's that's DC shit for me. Uh-huh. Yeah, like so. dudes, like you feel me, dude. My man's Ruminelli right here. Yeah. Like that's like other than that, my nigga, Young Seventeen. You yeah. know, and uh, you feel me, shot my nigga, Young Dior and all that. Everybody <laughs> pretty much is like it's pretty much all the fam. Like pretty much we put golf money is just family. Like and whoever else is in the affiliates of that is just all family. Pretty much mm-hmm. like we fuck with everybody really. That's that's just. But the people who was in the close realms is family, and that's pretty much it. Anybody come to mind that you guys would like to collaborate with? Oh um, uh, shit, Lil B. Oh okay, yeah, yeah. That's Fucking goals for many many artists. Mad lit. Okay. Yeah, I think Cray mentioned that that was an influence for you, and I was like, oh, so that means that Marcy's a little bit old school. All right. Yeah, yeah fuck, with, fuck with Mad lit. Yeah. I, don't, I ain't doing too many features right now, <laughs> man. <laughs> That's what's up. Um, shit, who, have you guys been on tour together? Who? who? You guys. We went Got on a small money. tour. Besides yeah, that young man. Yeah, we went on a small tour. Portland, Oakland, and Dallas. Yeah, uh-huh. we did uh, a couple shows in, LA. in Texas, uh, South by last year. Oh, okay. We do all our booking all by ourselves, so mm-hmm. it's yeah. like the shit is kind of sporadic. Right. Is that something you could see yourself like outsourcing at some point, getting a booking agent, or is that yeah. not even a concern? I mean, yeah, we would like to outsource, but we want the numbers to be right. Right. Like the same the same outcome that it is if you trying to like you feel me uh huh right 
We like, want to be dealing with our money ourselves. Yeah, because right. it's like we're we're the artists and like we're doing this. Shit. We're like we're putting our energy into it. Right. Like, we're taking quick. the flights. But, like we're shit. taking the flights. We're 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 booking the hotels. We're sleeping. We're performing. Right. We're eating. Is that DIY like punk rock attitude important to you though? Yeah, facts. Because yeah, like we it, live for that right. shit. It's, yeah. it's, it's like it just it just make you appreciate what right. you're actually doing. Right. right. We live for that yeah. shit to go on the road and like, go do shows like, all the time. I might I'm like somebody might hit me up and say like oh I want to book a show right and I might say three hundred. Uh huh. Kane might say. Fuck that shit, bro. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we worth more than that. You right, feel me? Right. And then I'll be like, hey, that, I agree, gang. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah. So that's that's like that's what golf money is. Like it's like yeah. a real, it's like, like real, real, like when the real. show is, when the show is like said and done and everything is correct and the right situation yeah. for us. Like we gonna come out and we gonna like kill the show. Kill the we show. gonna give you. Exactly everything that y'all wanted. Like yeah. that's just how that's golf money shows is. Like yeah. even that's why Young Lean wanted us to be on the show because the live performance, the live performance is crazy. Like we all got a different. You feel me? Ecstatic when we go on the stage. Like yeah. it's just Actually, crazy. It's, I, yeah, I, reminds, I toured. I toured all the way up to with the West with Young Lean. Just, oh, okay. just me and just me, Sad Boys and Young Lean. Right. And th- like that shit was crazy. Portland, Vancouver, like. I remember yeah. saying that they're like, damn, the fucking live performance was crazy as fuck. After the last uh, last hand performance, I think yeah. no, not not the last one, but the one before that one, the Halloween. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, that one was ill. That was a yeah, fucking that show was crazy. That was a crazy ass show. That was yeah. good. Trip set. That, that was everybody there. Yeah, that's, that's a full golf money show. Who who? Well, okay. How did you guys get that LA Weekly piece? Because I feel like besides the Young Lean thing, that's probably how a lot of people found out about y'all too. Yeah. Uh, this this writer, she uh, she. I got in contact with her when I first met, uh, moved out here, because mm-hmm. she was interested in Twiggy, and Cray. Okay. And then she kept uh, in contact with me, and then she was like, "Hey, uh, I got a piece for you guys in LA Weekly if you want to do it." Right. And then that's how it happened. What's that like though? Having a reporter hang out with you is it kind of cramp your style, yeah, or is cool. it whatever? He just was on some chill shit. Yeah. It was like. <laughs> I can imagine that's how it was for the like the Beatles or something back <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. day. When but they, like when all reporter, the time, yeah. Re, no, I'm talking about when their first reporter came. Oh, okay, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Got an interview from them. I'm gonna come clean, bro. Right here, put her on to the music. Oh, the really? Reporter, bro, put her on. What he was smashing or what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. Uh, I can't speak sh- on, bro. Shout out to the journalistic community <laughs> out there. No disrespect. Yeah. Uh, Damn. <laughs> Who else? Uh, what are the other members of the group that uh, are lesser known or that you guys feel affiliated with? Uh, so man, luckily, Karma, Honey Mill. Honey, yeah. Honey got the best bars. Yeah, honey, right. Honey got honey the best bars. bars. He's funny too. He was sitting right there. Yeah, over there. Honey got the best bars. Like Honey is a real Virginia yeah. dude. Okay. <laughs> Dirt road, man. Dirt road. I met. I, that's who I met first. Hundred and Karma. I mean, Hundred and Cray. Okay. Yeah. What about Karma though? What's he like? Karma is Karma's he? Young, he, he the youngest one. Yeah. He's he the, the youngest, youngest one. Well, when Golf Money was popping, he was locked up. Oh, okay. Homie. And we he came out and it was it was free <laughs> Young Jug. And you feel me? Once Young Jug got home, you feel me? Golf Money was just at the at the time just peaking, and we just he came back and did what he had to do and. It was just crazy how like his sound is crazy like he got a real down south Virginia sound too and it's just crazy right like he go hard what it's the, what? It's the seven like that seven five seven like like how Missy Elliott Tim <laughs> and Aaliyah and all <laughs> them was out in that Virginia shit it's like that's what Cray and all them is right right now right yeah who's filthy. Filthy from Philly. Yeah, yeah, from okay. Philly. It's a lot of heavy shit coming out of Philly right now. They really going in on the rock shit right now. Right. Okay. Yeah, four is a, fi- a filthy Oogie Man and uh, uh, what's it? Lucy, the Lucy Man. Okay. Yeah. Do you uh, do you prefer to do the vast majority of the production or do you like to switch it up? I like to fuck with Filthy uh-huh. and all them names I said and my jinx. Yeah. And then if somebody sends me some heat, I'll fuck with them, but... You gotta like they have to send me some heat, but most of the time I'm fucking with my own beats. Right, just making them. You got any producers you really like? Uh, I mean, I fuck with um, like DJ Ken. Okay, and like you know, like um, Dolan beats and shit, and like Filthy and Two Dizzy 
and uh, who else? Uh, Oogie Main beats. Like, all they beats fire, but it'd be mainly, like, beats from Marcy and shit. And, you know, uh, this nigga Luckily be making beats, like... Sometimes I make a beat or Kraya make a beat. So you make beats too. I yeah, know we all be doing everything, man. Like, it should be crazy. Right. We just making shit. Like, we'll make shit together and shit. Like, it'd be crazy. Marcy, is your your most recent SoundCloud song is a diss track. Is yeah. that your first ever diss track? Nah, I did something like before <laughs> and a long time ago. Yeah. Like, that's that real, that's real rap shit. You feel me? But this is a bass freestyle going in on Icy Twa. What's the, what's the beef there? It's no beef. It's just fuck Icy Twat. Yeah? You feel me? It's not even no beef because I don't know this man. I don't know this man either. I don't know him. He's just an internet character to me. But what, what did he do to offend you? Nah, he just does everything to offend everything that, that's going on. Really? Yeah. What, how, what, like what? I haven't been paying that close attention. All right. So the first thing is he st- he's took his name from my homie Avi Twat. Really? He was on some fan shit like Twat Gang, Twat Gang. Okay. And then my nigga Avi was like, oh, yeah, yeah Avi, Avi, yeah. Avi Twat. That's like that's what it is, Abby Twat. Okay. And that's MILF shit. Uh-huh. You feel me? So that's the first offense. And then he'll be like, Oh bro, I'm trying to get a uh like when I said in the song, Oh, you try to hit me up for a feature. Right. So it's like you try to hit me for a feature and now you hating on us and shit, doing all this Twitter shit. So it's like dumb. But so what he took some shots on Twitter? He it's not he he takes shots on Twitter. He says like sneak shit on Twitter, like like real Twitter shit. Yeah. You know I mean? At us. Okay. And it's like, okay, fuck you, bro. Like, just fuck you. Bro. Why do you think, what, what's the beef? Like, what, do you have an p- opinion on this? Man, it's I like, don't even be indulging into it because <laughs> it's just like, I be in the streets, man, and niggas don't come outside. I don't never, I ain't never seen this nigga name ever. So, yeah. It's just like, if dude want to say something to us, he could say something to us. I'm going to see you regardless. You feel me? I'll be in the streets. I'm. See, so he, he from Chicago. I'm from Chicago, so it's like I ain't never heard of this dude ever uh-huh. in my life. Like, yeah. so seen him a day in my life. I don't even know what he looked like. Like, regardless of he posts pictures if you want to, and the nigga don't show his face because he, I don't know, he's not a confident person. I don't know. Like, yeah, he, like he just he's like, like that's some like that's some real like, internet dude. Like, you, I don't know. Like, you really focused on. Everything that we're he doing did hit positive, all of us up before. Everything that we're doing is positive. Like, try to become a fan of us and then start hating on us. Like, right. when you try to get some clout or something. Uh-huh. It just started like a conversation. But I'm guessing this all extends from to the Divine Council dudes too, who didn't seem uh, they didn't want to talk about it when I tried to bring it up on their uh, interview. Yeah, we. I mean, it's nothing really to speak on, yeah. but it's just them. They don't. It's not even no beef with them. I just I don't know them even either like yeah, i know like, cray knows them because yeah. they from virginia and they have a little relationship with them because they from virginia but it's not even on that because i, I really don't even know them dudes yeah. and they don't they you don't feel know me? me yeah they, they were they were probably fans of ours right so it's like and like icy yeah. twat could be boosting their head thinking we the bad guy yeah. or something like it's not it's even like, nothing like that yeah. it's just but it's all it's, just twitter it's, bullshit yeah huh? it's twitter it's bullshit it's people really, being too much really, on the internet it's really, it's really not divine council it's really icy twat really yeah that's the that's the really that's have, really have you met this guy no nobody really? nobody, no, nobody. No, i don't think no i don't even think i don't i, I bet divine council probably haven't met i think they said that they did they, they probably haven't met icy twat really no they probably haven't met icy twat Damn, the legend of Icy Twat on Falls. I don't, I don't, I've never seen a picture of him. No, I, don't I don't know, know if they haven't met Icy Twat, but I bet they haven't met Icy Twat because he's in Chicago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Twitter, he's a, Twitter he's probably, a, he's probably a young dude on Twitter just yeah. going crazy. Right. Just going crazy, just like I was in college, but it's like, okay. You were crazy on the internet when you were in college? Yeah. <laughs> like what? what? Like, you on 4chan? Just like that shit with, what happened with Wale. Okay. It's the same shit. It's the same shit. Like, yeah. Same shit. You ever have any other rappers respond to you, though? Taking shots at Ja Rule or something? And just, nah, you know, I don't, I don't take shots at okay. rappers. I don't take shots at rappers. Yeah. I don't, like, you don't sneak this on the internet. I don't sneak this on the internet. Wale will probably watch this. He'll probably be like, damn, I heard those goth money guys were talking nah, about but, me. Nah, nah <laughs> man. Shout out to Wale, Wale, man. He doing his thing. He putting DC on. He really... He put he put DC on rap. You feel me? Right. He, he, put, he set everybody in, in DC to come out. 
So See, even if people don't fuck with him and he, cut ass on him all the time, you still got to give him his man, respect for what he did. That's what some DC shit to do, like I said. You yeah. Cut on niggas and fry their ass up. That's some DC shit to yeah, do. Yeah, you going to fry icy twat ass it's up. A, yeah, that's what it is. We frying we fry icy twat. We frying twi- everybody ass up. Frying everybody up. Frying icy twat ass up. So it's, it's like really Wale number one, icy twat number two? Nah. I, no, icy twat number one, Wale nah, number two. Shit. I, nah, icy twat is not even on there. Okay. Uh, Wale is a real artist, you feel me? Okay. You feel me? Uh, Wale is not even fo- Wale is not going to watch this shit, you feel me? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. checking the if, mentions. <laughs> hey, if he watch this shit, then it's like shouts out to Wale, whatever. Fuck right. it, you feel me? He on some he on his shit, you feel me? Icy Twitter is on his fuck ass shit, you feel me? <laughs> So that's what it is. Hey, I'm Lewis Farrakhan. I'm trying to just bring the peace, you know? Exactly. Right. Or that's at least just giggle that's, and hear that, about that, it. And that's I'm the thing. Peace. That's the thing. Because you know the fans want to hear about it just because yeah, it's, it's weird, though, because it is 100% internet based. So it's not it, like it's, them dudes, I feel like, man, they be focused to be on the internet. Like, yeah. like I'm going to come clean. I watch the interview and they talk about they go to SoundCloud. Like, I don't go to SoundCloud to put my music out. Like, uh-huh. like and that's just like to tell you, like, the SoundCloud shit is not the way to just make music and just to get out like as a form like you feel me we made our music and put our our creative shit of golf money on soundcloud as we started but we didn't use that as a form to put our music out and we put we was using band camp and shit so it was just like like that's the that's just the 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 trend of it like you know like that's what we set and then it's just like People follow and then they hate because we don't show them attention or and that's a that's not even just to say divine counsel or anybody that's like a lot of people that we have that's just encounter with us and listen to our music and that's just how it is and we just I mean we just stay humble and just do what we got to do because we don't have time to be worrying about other people and you know yeah. indulging into none yeah. of that stuff it's negative energy we positive people like yeah. we don't even like I, I hit up I hit up Icy Twat and was like yo yo uh, my girl heard your, your music in an Uber in LA that's tight bro right and then he's and then you still talking some shit on the internet like I'm spending time you feel me reach out to you on some positive shit and you still talking shit on the internet and it's uh-huh. like it's like that's why. That's when it becomes to the point. All right, bro, just fuck you. And they just like trying to, or him, he trying to just stir some little shit up. Like it's like, like the rest of us, it's not even. We don't talk about it. Like we gonna see niggas in the streets, and that's what it is. Like we we gonna approach you and see what the real altercation is because if it's a real problem, it's not nothing serious. Like you know, we could talk about it like grown man and just handle the shit like. So it's it's not yeah. even no real beef. All the people yeah. on all the internet people just on the internet people being like, stupid. They tweeting, being uh, stupid and uh, ignorant. Uh, That's all it is. The beef between divine counsel and golf money. There is no beef because yeah. I don't know them. You yeah. feel me? They are just. I, never, I feel like they are inspired and don't want to pay credit to what it's doing. It's just. You know that's not that's not gonna get you anywhere. You feel me? You gotta pay credit to where it's due because even yeah. if y'all were inspired, there's there's facts that y'all yeah. were inspired. It's like, so it's, it's just it's like just be real to the rap to the rap game and what it is. Right. Like everybody. That's what we. Everybody do. knows everything. Everybody like everything's on the table. That's like, why we have our our. You feel me? Our yeah. let's like let's, our wave of what we doing you know, right now is going hard yeah, because we being real, real to the game. We staying true. I got it tatted on my hands. Like staying real true to yeah. everything. Like everybody know everything. Everybody knows like this is golf what money. Every group in the in the game right now in in the underground game is doing. Everybody knows what golf money's doing. We're doing our thing. Everybody knows what team session they're going crazy. Yeah, you feel me? Everybody knows what everybody's doing. Like you like those guys? Yeah, yeah they man. They, all of them. All of them. Like, they go we listen they, to their music, and that's why we pay homage, and they fuck with us, and we fuck with them. Yeah. Like it's always like when when I see Ethelwood for Chris Travis or whatever. Like I, I ain't seen him when we did that show with him uh, the, at the Ham shit. But uh-huh. usually when it, I say what's good to them. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, we. I'm cool. I'm real like cool with Xavier. What they doing, like Xavier, too, what, what they doing is like positive. You feel me? They yeah. really for the culture. For the culture. Xavier is such a hater. You guys are one of the few rap groups that I've ever heard him like rap along to and like be into. So I'm going to say that. Yeah. I haven't heard him be stoked on a lot of rappers, but he's yeah. cool with you guys. And actually, one time, we had, we had a meet and greet with him out here, and I yeah. think you guys saw the little videos on Twitter, but like right. Chili Sosa with a big <laughs> ass and fucking Eddie Baker and, yeah. and X were all like dancing and singing to some songs. Exactly. I, I think I've seen that shit. Yeah, that was tight. Yeah. What, uh, 
you you DJ it here at an FTP event. Yeah. And that was fucking ill as fuck. That yeah. was uh, what what what's like your mentality when you go into DJ an event like that? Because I asked you afterwards, I was like, Oh, you got a set list from that? And you were like, Nope, off the top. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> that's that that's like that's what I prepared for when I was in college, man. Mm-hmm. Sitting there just going crazy, just mixing hella music. Like I'm actually mixing. Cause I got inspired by like Mike Watson, and DJ Screw, how they screwed this shit. So I would I be slowing it down, chopping it up. Yeah. Like mixing like classical with some rap shit. Right. Yeah. What are like the first songs that come to mind though when you're gonna be DJing like an event like that where you know it's like actual underground rap fans that are gonna uh, appreciate some of the shit you play? Like first track or always <laughs> trap for some reason I always drop an egg off song. Oh okay. the first track. Mm-hmm. Cause that shit might get it popping off. I don't know why. It should mm-hmm. just like it just but is, is Agoff off SODMG on Goth Money? No. Nah, nah, nah. Is that how this works? Mm. Hell nah, uh, no. No, yeah, I don't know. I was just looking at his Twitter the other day and I didn't nah. see the SODMG nah, nah, on nah, that. He nah, asked nah. God, really. Yeah. Okay. We just linked with uh, Agoff on some like random shit like one day mm-hmm. in LA. Like He was like, yo, come through the studio. Let's make some tracks. Let's make a song about shooting people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that shit ain't even really about shooting people. That's just like really like. We walked in the studio like, and he had the song ready. Yeah. And it was, oh, okay. So uh, it's, was, not even, it's not even really yeah. about shooting people if you like. Sh- well, the chorus is shoot them up, shoot them up, shoot them up, shoot them up. But that's like a re- that's really a feeling. <laughs> that's a metaphor? That's really a feeling, man. It's okay. Feeling. Yeah. Shoot him yeah, up. Yeah, shoot him up. Man. Shoot him up. <laughs> hey, look at he's all that's, proud of his like handiwork. He's yeah, like, bro. yeah. That, that's why when I in my verse I said golf money and we booted it. Ah, funny? okay. Because that's how, that's what the feeling of the song is like. Sh- like shoot him up. Like you feel me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Going thirty. <laughs> you guys do a lot of drugs. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do weed and codeine. Codeine. Yeah. Okay. I don't think weed is a drug anymore, bro. But is weed the only thing you really indulge in? Yeah, bro. Okay. Yeah. Stay off the pills and everything. Yeah, I, I love I smoking gas. That's yeah. about it. Like I love top weed, show. man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's I'm he's from looking D- me deep in the eyes like, saying he loves weed. <laughs> I'm from D.C., so we have trash weed out there. So when you come to oh, California, so you really appreciate it. Okay, you going to yeah. appreciate this good. But how many years you been here? Two years. Oh, okay. Two so years. you're still kind of yeah, like fresh to the, to the yeah. amazing weed. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm here. I'm living here. I got I got a kid on the way. Yeah. F- probably finna get married soon. Really? Yeah. How long you been with this uh, this girl? Two years. What's her name? I ain't about to say my oh. girlfriend name on the internet. I always want to shout out. I ain't about to look up my girlfriend. Fuck I want to show love, so then I'm gonna see you at a party with her, and then Uh-oh. she's gonna be really happy to see me because she'll be like, "Oh, Adam was shouting me out on the podcast." You'll see, and then I'll have a new friend. You'll see her when, when she come out. <laughs> okay. You see when she come out. What's she like though? White girl? No, 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 no. no okay. No, no, never. Yeah. <laughs> I could see him with a god girlfriend though. I could see him with a straight hot topic gr- princess and a slipknot no, shirt. My girl is white. Your yeah, girl's white. Girl you got a girlfriend? White. Yeah, I got a oh, girlfriend. My sure. girl is Sri Lankan. Sri Lankan. Yeah. Wow, I got right. a girlfriend, man. I got a girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, I got a girlfriend for how long? It's, uh, for a year. A year. Yeah. Okay, shit. Oh, that's pretty good. You know, keep it in your pants a little bit, you know. Yeah, keep, keep it low key. Is it tough to have a girlfriend though? It is tough, I swear to man, God. It's, it's tough to have a girlfriend. When you on tour, man, you got to you gotta but make sure you, you fucking talking, talking to your to girl, man, because she going to be thinking you doing all types of shit. You got to make sure that you get rid of all and the no, condoms I'm a, and I'm everything. A pre- I'm a, exactly. Nah, I came home one, ain't, I came home no one time. I had I condoms. You guys ain't pocket. cheaters? I, I cheated on my girl. What I happened? cheated on her. She's still with me. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. But when you say you cheated on your girl, you mean you got caught cheating on your girl? Nah, I told her I cheated on her. Why? On me, cause I gotta tell the truth, man. Oh, you gotta okay. tell the truth to these girls. If you don't tell the truth to them, you tell them lies. That's why they doing what they doing now, man. Yeah, it's they gonna crazy. Be, like you, all these girls girl, out here, she gonna go crazy. That's crazy what, right now. I just man. keep it true, man. I don't, I don't, I don't talk to no. Girls. I can't even lie to my mama, and it's I lie to her all the time. So it's just like <laughs> lying to all these girls. It's like the way my mama go crazy when I lie to them. What if I lie to all these girls like that? They gonna go crazy. If, yeah. I, if I'm not with my girl, then I'm with golf money. You feel me? Right. That's exactly. what. That's, that's what it is. And I'm with gang. If I ain't with my girl, yeah, yeah. They like it that way. They got to keep you under a lock and key. You know. Yeah. yeah. They be trying to lock us away from gang. They don't she, want us she to hold, be outside. Like, my girl hold me down. You feel me? So how do you cheat though? You uh, did you, were you having a full on like I was affair, out or would you just bang some chick here. one time? Nah, I, I was. I had. Banged the chick one time. I was out there show. You feel me? Banged the chick. You got him talking like a white boy all of a sudden. Yeah, I banged this chick. Banged yeah, the chick, man. Fucking banged this <laughs> chick. He's talking like me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real rock. I said it, and then he said it. Yeah. Yeah, but 
That shit is crazy though. Like I told her about cheating on her because it was just like, man, she called me crying one time and she was like, I just got pulled over in my driveway and I got locked up for three hours and they're they're taking away my car and my my license or whatever. She got pulled over in her driveway. Why? Man, she was supposedly drunk or something. Oh, okay, okay. Some my girl from New Jersey, so it's crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. So anyway, man, the shit is crazy. Just don't lie to girls, cause don't after, lie after girls. she called me like that, I was like, she knew I've already probably cheated on her. So I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna just tell you the truth now, cause. It's like no point to hold that shit in, and if you're going to cheat on your girl, you're going to cheat on her, and she going to know when you probably cheated because, you know, it's just your, if you cheat your, on girl, your girl, no. If you cheat on your girl, your whole demeanor finna be yeah. different, off jump. You think you can't you, hold it together? Right. The long, something the, so going to come to light. Me, the Some connection that me and my girl have, she going to know. So really? I'm not finna cheat on my girl, and plus, on top, I'm not about to cheat on my girl. I got a baby girl on the way. That's so, a big deal. That's definitely a game so gotta, changer. So I got to hold down the structure of the family, you feel me? Right. Because I got, like, women right there. You take pride in being, like, a good uh, father figure to this Hell scenario? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm about okay. to, I'm finna hold my baby girl down, you feel me? Damn, look at these guys. Goth money, hearts yeah, of gold. Man, for the kids, man. For yeah, the family. I'm finna hold my baby girl down. <laughs> That's one of the questions I have written down is, like, you know, being that you guys have this goth image to represent, are you ever scared that you might be, you might just get happier and you might just want to wear neon board shorts or something, I'm, you I'm know? Shit, nigga, I'm happy Marcy right now. Yeah. You guys are very I'm, jolly. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Finna be, I'm happy right nigga, now. Marcy, you you already be on that I got neon two shit. Pokemon. Luckily, shit. be on this neon shit. Yeah. Too. <laughs> I got two Pokemon sitting in my back seat right now. What do you this mean? Nigga really got I Pokemon got in, in his my back, back seat. The cards or what? Yeah, a little uh, real Squirtle real, and a real uh, Charm. Charmander in my back seat of my car. Okay. Why yeah. you guys are just hardcore Pokemon fans? I'm a hardcore Pokemon fan. Bro, yeah, you gotta turn the Instagram notifications off. I can see the likes rolling in. Somebody blowing my shit. That's gonna kill your battery. Yeah. The same person. If, <laughs> if your girl finds out about fucking but when they like a whole row of photos in a row, that's trouble. I don't I don't even be on Instagram liking nothing. You know? <laughs> if I like if I like anything on Instagram, then it's gonna be some problems, you feel me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I used to have those problems, but yeah, they'll figure it out. I, I mean I, I like what I like, man. Yeah. And I I told my girl if I'ma like something, I'ma like it because she do the same thing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, sometimes it's sometimes just, like sometimes yeah. that Girls don't understand what you're like if you're liking something for something for one reason and they think you're liking it for another. But what if what if you looked at, somehow saw that your girl liked like a photo of a dude with like really nice abs? Facts. I'm gonna be tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, but I'm not gonna even. I'm not even going to try to go to look for that shit. Tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not yeah, even. Yeah, yeah fast. I'm not even really looking. But I think that, they but, are looking. Yeah, they're, they're always looking, looking at that shit. Definitely. They figure out all kinds of weird stuff. I start definitely. looking when they. T t when I know they looking like. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't try to, I don't try, I don't want to focus on that shit. I try yeah, it's be, just, it's just, I try, I, be on, yeah. I try to be on the positive. Exactly. My girl could be cheating on me so hard and I would yeah. never know. I don't right. give a, like, I'm not looking into that, you know? Bro. Yeah. Yo, I be hey, thinking that. I all hope, the time. whatever it is, hey, I hope my girl not cheating on me. Yeah, right. That's what it comes exactly. to. Exactly. I don't want, because this is the thing. They're smart. Yeah. We're smart. If you want to cheat, well, you just said that you don't think that you'd be able to get away with cheating. For me personally, like I don't. Do, even I think she could. Cheat. I think she could cheat if she wanted to and yeah. get away with it because right. it's like you know everybody has like ten hour periods in the exactly. day where they're not around that person. Like you could be doing fucking anything. Oh, I went to the dentist. You're actually. Getting right. your dick sucked Damn, through a glory man. hole in a bathroom. That, yeah. Maybe. That's some, that's some real next shit. I'm going to be either And that's what a lot I'm of these be, girls is doing but, nowadays, yeah. man. It, that's like, why you got you to you you gotta gotta know right girl. You got to know me. what's the once real you, superficial joint, not a superficial Yeah, hoe. I'm just not worried about my once chick you, doing that once anyway. Once you yeah. find the right girl, then you know I'm not going to do shit. Yeah. You, but, but before then... If you was with a girl and she wasn't right, the right one, you finna cheat the on girl, her. That's what right. it is. The girl is supposed to make you, the man loyal to all the yeah. right things, you feel me? Yeah. And if a girl can't make you loyal to what she wants, then, then it's just like that girl is not the right girl because girls are supposed to have morals. A lot of these girls just come around, yeah. dudes like rappers and shit and artists. and Go you, crazy. Yeah, they just right. they just already like know what we want and sh and that's why, you feel me, girls that are real, they, they know like, oh, I'm not going to even be doing that because, you know, like I'm not about to show a dude like that attention. Like he's like a drug head. He's a, a bad guy. Like, you 
know, you got to get to know a girl like that's real. And half of these girls, they come around, and they just like, oh, I already know you, so you can just like you. Yeah, you just gotta be on a higher level of yeah, thinking for real, right? To, to understand what's going on out here. In the what's game. what's the standard like things that you would do when you're just cooling with your girl? Like you guys watch TV and just we, chill out. Netflix, we, man. We eat, we eat good foods. We good watching food, uh, good food. We watching Z Nation. What's that? This is zombie show. It's oh, real okay. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we watching. Uh, t- what's that shit? What's that sh- cooking show? Uh, chop, chop, chop. I gotta be. I'll on. be watching Kitchen Nightmare. I need Nightmare. to be on chop. <laughs> my shorty, my shorty is a chef. If, if anybody from the Cooking Network is watching this, I'm trying to be on chop, man. <laughs> I need to get on there. Marcy man for chop. Golf money for chop. <laughs> oh man. Chef in five plates, man. You watch Making a Murderer? Yeah, that's on uh, that little ID show. Uh, it's on HBO, I think, but it's about just a dude that apparently might have got framed for a murder and a rape and all this kind of crazy shit. Uh, I don't know. It's pretty intense. If, if I, I highly suggest it. <laughs> my girl be watching that 48 hours shit it's awkward for me though because honestly like my friend's dad is one of the lawyers on the show yeah, and right. they make him look so bad it's fucking awkward even watching it I'm like damn I feel bad for this dude my girl like watching first 48 yeah. okay so some she white and she like watching first 48 I don't know why <laughs> She just into that shit. What kind of white girl though? Is she like a suicide girl looking girl or is she like a she, Abercrombie looking girl? She Polish, so she she just real foreign looking and she just like doing foreign things. <laughs> <laughs> doing foreign things like what? <laughs> Going shopping at the bazaar? Nah, she like watering plants and shit and <laughs> cooking up fire meals. How long pastry. in a day could you be watering plants? Fish. A good I solid watch, five watch minutes. Water plants for like two, three hours, bro. Yeah, I swear. How many followers does your girlfriend have on Instagram? Sitting probably like four hundred. Okay, that's safe. I think. What about you? My girl probably got like three thousand. Three thousand. Well, you got to be careful, then. that's so. <laughs> she don't be. She don't, she don't be on. She don't be on here, bro. <laughs> no, but hey, you, you remember that Yams tweet? Like, hey, never yeah. trust a bitch with more than two hundred hey, followers. That's a fact, though. I'll, <laughs> hey, I'll be hey, on that. I be, be niggas, on my girl because she got more than two. It be niggas going ham on her page. Still, probably, but right. I don't. I don't care though. Cause yeah. I'm not trying to even focus. I mean, that is something that you have to deal with as a guy too. Is like they're hot. Yeah. You know the other guys are gonna holler at them. You got to deal with it. Then you need to know one thing. Yeah. Guys are gonna look at her. Yeah. That's you. She pretty. Take pride in that. It's like having a nice car. Nobody's mad when people stare at your Lambo when you're driving down the street, right? You gotta. You gotta (laughs) stop staring at my Lambo. (laughs) Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Nice man. You can't have a Lambo if you're gonna be mad at everybody for staring at it, right? Yeah. You gotta listen to that that thug. Gotta own your shit. That thugged off, pissed off song. Lil (laughs) Lil B breaks it down. Don't look at my bitch. She's too fine. (laughs) <laughs> like that's some real shit niggas be on that though that is real shit yeah, hey we, we could you wife cardi b up hell no nah, nah, boy <laughs> i have that written down for nah, some reason i thought of that but earlier she would probably be a fun person to like to be around to hang out with yeah, for sure probably, yeah 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 but it definitely she nah yeah i'm nah. trying to smoke with cardi b man. what about like she, physically are you attracted to cardi b with a huge fake ass and fake tits nah, nah. man no. She's funny as shit though. Yeah, yeah I know that. She's Couldn't even funny. one night she look like a daffy. Nah. nah, nah. She look like a daffy. A daffy? Yeah. What's that mean? Just a daffy. <laughs> she real daffy. Hey, she hey, daffy. that's her good analogy. <laughs> she is daffy. Her like she's a daffy person. Like daffy like, duck. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> But she she's funny as shit though. Yeah, My girl is like super white and super normal. And earlier today we were having a conversation about Cardi B, and I showed her Instagram and tried to like explain it to her and my girl's just like it's weird how somebody could be famous for being a stripper i'm like no she's really more famous for being like a comedian yeah she's more of a comedian than a stripper yeah at this point she's funny as shit she probably she's gonna be she's gonna be a a new york she's gonna be like a she's gonna get she's gonna get famous she's She's gonna be around forever yeah she's gonna like she's probably gonna become like Discover herself. Well, now that like, she's on Love and Hip Hop, she's on Love and Hip Hop. You ever watch Love and Hip Hop? Yeah, I, I don't really watch, I watch it. That's Cray Favorite Show. Oh, yeah, Cray wrote a fucking song. I about watched, it. That's I Cray Favorite Show. Time. I had to go and figure out who uh, Stevie J was and fucking Jocelyn. Uh, I Googled I, it, like, who the fuck are yo, these people because of a Cray song? Stevie J and Jocelyn is the f- the best couple ever, man. They, yeah, they go crazy. They go like crazy, Stevie, man. Stevie J. I'm trying to get a track. I'm trying to get a beat. I'm trying from to make Stevie me J. and my girl like Stevie J and Jocelyn. But wait, Papoose and Remy Ma are on it now, right? Yeah, they. 
didn't watch it yet. They the best couple on, on Love and Hip Hop. I heard Papoose like the That's Papoose crazy. was the coolest motherfucker, yeah. even though he's been an irre- they irrelevant they rapper for a minute. A they set they set oh, yeah. they set in how it's supposed to how you supposed to be with your girl on Love and Hip Hop. Right. They, they, they too real. They, he waited seven years while yeah. she was in jail. That like they I, better have a great relationship, yeah, I like, dude. I, I like their story in the new Love and Hip Hop because they real they fuck with each other real hard. Right. Yeah. That's what's up. I'm gonna start watching Love and Hip Hop just to see Cardi B though, to be honest. Because I've she she only on here a little bit. Oh like, really? Like, but she funny though. So yeah, she be like, she's real funny. Fuck. All right, I and mean, we're pretty much at the time limit. Uh, you guys want to do some shout outs and let us know what's coming from the Goth Money Click? Shit, man. Shit. Shout out to Goth Money, man. Yeah. Shout out to all the Goth Money fans. Goth Money World, you know. Yeah. Uh, be on the lookout for. We all got some individual projects coming out. I got my land of Afghanistan dropping next month. Uh, Cray just dropped that uh, Oja Rari World shit. Um, like a lane finna drop some shit soon. We all got shit coming out real soon. And just be on the lookout for the merch too. We got yeah. that shit going crazy. And we got a show in Houston next next month. February 12th. Yeah. Man. Come on, everybody come out and represent. Yeah, yeah the man. whole golf money coming up. Everybody come out to that. And if you in Houston, man, it's going down, man. It's we got the rare golf money Houston hats. Yeah, yeah, look at that shit. Yeah. Look at the camera with it. Yeah, yeah flex. I'm putting on quick, for Houston, quick change. man. I'm putting her on for Houston because I fuck with DJ Screw. Okay. Yeah. My homie, this, uh, my homie Chase used to wear them hats, the Houston hat. Right. In uh, college all the time. That's what's up. Yeah. So I took, the, I was like, this nigga used to wear the Houston hat. I'm about to, I'm finna flip that joint. Right. Yeah. Where can people pick up the Goth Money merchandise? Uh, on MadeInFlexico.com or just follow oh. us on. Uh, yeah, you can link with us in yeah. person and we'll give you that shit. Right. Hey, people want to know. Well, hold on. Uh, people want to know where Flexico is. Flexico the is definition. I know Cray said it, but I figured we should get you to say it one more time. Flexico is like, it's like a state of mind for real. Uh uh-huh. It's like your perfect utopia. Okay. And that's where you got like, I don't know. You just, I don't know. a secret world. It's man. a secret world. You feel me? You got. You gotta watch the secret. Okay, then you understand yeah. what Flexico is. I do have to watch that because everybody keeps bringing it everybody up. Everybody want to be Flexico. Don't nobody want to be from Flexico. Don't nobody want to be from Flexico, man. <laughs> don't nobody wanna be from Flexico, man. Yeah, I feel you. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for uh, coming on No Jumper. Everybody subscribe to us on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes. And follow NoJumper.com on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Follow the Goth Money Boys. If you look at the screen right now, you'll be able to see their uh, Instagram, Twitter handles, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to the OG Craig. Go and watch his interview if you haven't seen it yet. And uh, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Shout yeah, out man. No shout out to man. Black Craig, man. Shout out to Hundred Mill Luckily, man. Shout out to Milf, man. Shout out to my mom and dad. Shout out to my brother and sister. Shout out to my girlfriend and my baby. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs>